Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, just a quick video to show progress on the left flap. I uh, haven't worked on it as much as I would have liked to. I had to leave town for company business, but I'm back at it. So I thought I'd show you a quick, uh, quick video to show progress and uh, go through a couple of things. Um, first of all, if you've got the Bearhawk Builders books, you saw the technique of using um, door shims brad nailed to your uh, to your workbench to hold down your ribs flat to the table I also did the same thing up here now you can see that I'm not flat to the table right now that's because I had to take the uh, the fixture loose to get the um, leading edge out and put um, these little you can see how I bent down the trailing edge here to uh, give it some strength and um, keep it away from the fabric when it's covered. So, <clears throat> a couple things to talk about that will be of interest to guys building it. First of all, make your test bend pieces. Um, if, you, if your ribs are built to plans, your test bend, your starting number should be, uh, uh, the first leg will be 5 and an eighth, then a 9 sixteenth uh, center, center web, and 3 and 5 eighths. Um, the uh, forward down portion and I think the uh, total length of the uh, flap or excuse me the leading edge is 11 and 7 eighths don't know that for sure you'll have to measure your own but my point is is make make multiple test bends and fit them because when you bend up the leading edge which I've done here now you can see it's on um, you know the OTO aluminum although it's not super expensive it's it's 88 bucks a sheet plus you got to ship it plus you got to find someone to cut it for you and then when you screw it up you got to find someone to cut another piece for you and if you continue to screw them up you'll end up buying more sheets and you know how it goes so everything's drilled uh, on the leading edge I drilled everything with the number 40 first then upsized to a 30 which is 1 8 for the the aluminum pop rivets I got one down here somewhere here's one little aluminum pop rivets that are going to go in there um, what I did is I laid out, you can see the line here, the line here. I laid all that out based on the lines I've drawn on my table before I even bent this. So I had center lines for each rib before I went to bend. And then of course I marked and pre-drilled this hole here before I even bent. And you can see there's a cleat goes out of that one before I even bent the leading edge. This way all I had to do is get this thing stuffed on there, get everything squared up, lined up, move my nose rib into the window properly and what you do with the nose rib is you you know you take your sharpie don't mind my word camera angles here uh, I don't have one readily available it doesn't look like a decent one anyway here we go you know, you take a sharpie and uh, you make a, a line on the center of your rib like so. And then when you slide the rib back and forth in the window, when the line appears in the hole here, I don't know if you can even see it, when the line appears in the hole, you drill it and you know that you got that rib straight. So, not too bad. Um, I tried to roll... I tried to roll this leading edge with a piece of PVC pipe. There it is right there. To try to get a curve in it. Uh, that, that was a disaster. That doesn't work well. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. Just kind of roll it over by hand. Just force it down. Do one, you know, do your first rivet all the way down every row. Then the second row and so on. Just keep rolling it forward. So the last thing to show you real quick is I've, I've now made the O2O gussets in the 32 thousandths center web gusset and the way I did that is I just did some measuring off the plans and um, I made these paper cardstock templates that I used to mark my aluminum sheet and the only reason I did that was is I wanted to make sure that I was able to use the template to you know to trial fit it and make sure it was what I wanted before I cut it on the expensive aluminum. Um, one other little trick I learned 
uh, digging my plans out is going to be difficult. But on the plans, it'll say scale 1 to 5, something like that. Um, I was watching the uh, Cleveland guys the other night, and it was interesting because the the fella, he measured it in, on the metric side. So let's say the, the plans say 1 to 5. So rather than trying to figure all that out in, you know, the drawing shows it as uh, seven eighths of an inch, and then you're trying to do five times seven eight, and you know it's just a bunch of goofy math. Measure it in millimeters, and then it's easy. For example, this leg right here on this template is just over an inch. It's like an uh, inch and an eighth right here. This leg. Well, when I measured it on the plans, it was twenty millimeters. Well, or whatever it works out to. I just did twenty times five is a hundred. Then I slid my metric scale up against my standard scale with uh, 1 on 1 and 100 on whatever it turned out, and bam, there's my measurement. Perfect. So this is what we're doing. Today we're going to put lighting holes in here, and we're going to get the gussets faceted into place, get this thing all drilled up, hopefully get it apart and primed so I can start putting it together permanently. All right, until next time, we'll see you in the shop.